Today we're going to be joined by some little helpers in the shop to make a play table for the kids' playroom. This is a very simple build using 2x4s and screws for the base and an MDF sheet for the top. So this will be the top, got everything. This will be the, one piece will be the bottom, side, one more side, and I think that'll give us enough for the legs. You want the table to be, put your, put your arm out like this, like this, this high. That'll be good to play because then you guys can sit on the, on your knees. Like this. Think that's good? Mm -hmm. Going to start out over at the miter saw where we will use the stop block for repeatable cuts where we are going to break down those 2x4s to the sections that we need for the legs, stretchers, and the other various components of the base of this play table. With my son's help, we laid out the base of the table upside down, and here you can kind of see what we're going to do as our little plan. We're going to have the 2x4 stretchers across the middle there so that the MDF doesn't sag, and then it's just going to be simple screws to hold everything together with one support across the bottom to make sure the whole table doesn't rack. A lot of the screws that I use nowadays claim that you don't need to drill holes and typically it works pretty well but on the edge of a 2x4 like this I always like to drill in countersink so that we prevent any possible splitting. There's nothing worse than driving a screw home, splitting your end and wrecking the piece that you've been working on. Somehow, faces make the screws drive so much better every time. Across the bottom of the legs, I want to add this spacer to prevent the legs from racking or swaying side to side, and I'm using the spacer itself to add a 3.5 inch gap because I don't want that sitting on the floor as it could cause the whole thing to rock. And then lastly for this base, there is this, it's not another spacer, but another span board, which is going to prevent the whole table from rocking end to end. And then my daughter and I added some final screws attaching the leg to the frame itself. Like I mentioned, the top of this table is going to be MDF, and there's a little bit of history to this because the previous owner, when he left the house, asked if we wanted to keep them. I said, sure, and here we are four years later using a free sheet of MDF, which is kind of nice because all of the materials are really high right now with all of the goings on in the world, so we'll take it. Anyway, I cut it down to the width that we needed on the table saw, and while I was over there, I used the off cut to make a couple of one and a half inch strips, and this we will glue and nail around the perimeter of this board to add a little bit of a ledge, because the game that the kids are mostly going to play on this has a bunch of little balls that they move around, so we need those walls. And then, cutting everything down to the length that we needed, we used the track saw, which is super great for dust collection, especially with something as nasty as MDF. And here we got those boards that we had cut down for the perimeter and I did notice a little bit of bow in the bigger board so I'm just going to make sure I have that bow up so that I can push it down as I am gluing and nailing the sides in place and it should hold everything nice and flat. Using one and a quarter inch galvanized 18 gauge nails and a little bit of tight bond too. The kids do enjoy helping me with little tasks like this in the shop and it allows me to do other things like break down the remaining material that needs to be cut down, something that they are not able to do yet. Cool. 
After we glued and brad nailed, I did go back, drill some holes, and add some 1 and 5 8 inch screws just for a little bit of extra strength. MDF is not strong, and the brad nails are actually kind of only holding things into place as the glue dries. But again, being MDF, you could knock this off very easily, so a couple of screws will add a little bit of extra strength. And then it was time to bring the table up into the kids' attic playroom. We built this playroom a while back, and it kind of replaces the basement that we lost when we moved away from our old house. Kids don't play up here as much as we would like them to, but hopefully this new game table will bring them up here a little bit more often. Make sure everything was spaced around that base correctly, and added four screws to hold the top down to the structure. The real driver for building this game table was my son was given an old toy of mine and my brothers from back in the day. It is called Rockabock and it is a remote control construction set where you use the equipment to move around these little red and blue balls that are different sizes. It's good fun. My brothers and I played it all the time. It is now his and we wanted to put this up in the attic. The base station for this game does plug into a 120 volt outlet and being a true champ I decided when I built the playroom that I didn't need one in this wall even though it would have been super easy so Greenworks is to the rescue with their 300 watt power inverter. This uses the same 60 volt batteries that you use to power all of your Greenworks outdoor power tools which are awesome by the way and it converts it to a usable 120 and it has some USB outlets on there as well. Perfect for powering this and anything else in your house if you should lose power. Thank you Greenworks for sponsoring the channel. Check them out, link in the description below. Well there we are, the kids have built themselves a little play table. They can play memory on here, they can play with their kinetic sand or whatever, but the Rockenbach here is pretty fun. This is actually an old toy that I had when I was growing up and my parents gave it to my son for his birthday a couple of weeks ago. And they do enjoy it when they don't have all the cords tangled up. But uh, thanks to Greenworks for giving us that inverter and we can now power it without running any cords across the room to where we had actually put plugs into the wall. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and inspired you to get out and do something with your kids as well. The kids enjoy helping me out in the shop. Yes, it does slow me down big time usually, but it is good for them. Please hammer that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. I'm DIY Tyler and you guys have a good one. Kayla, you crashed. Don't crash. Is that fun? <laughs>